Hi, my name's Shady and welcome to a new video. So today I am going to be talking about all of the books that are on my 2024 TBR. So this is my 24 books for 2024. So I've picked out 24 books that I really, really want to read this year. Some are the first in a series, some are just standalones and some are continuations of series. And then I have multiple books that are within a series as well so it's gonna be a year for hopefully finishing some series because i quite clearly have commitment issues i never finish series even some of my favorite series like for example throne of glass i love throne of glass but i still have not finished reading that series i refuse to in a way because i just don't ever want it to be over and i'm also terrified of the last three books in that series so yeah i've been saying every single year this is going to be the year that I read them and it never happens. So I want to make sure that 2024 is a year where it happens, where I finish series, where I read at least one of the books in the series because there's just so many series I'm in the middle of. So even if I only read one more book out of like however many, I will be happy with that as long as there is progress happening. So yeah, you will notice a lot of these are like sequels and such. But yes, I guess without further ado let's get into it and it makes sense i guess to start with these three since i just mentioned them so these are the final three books in the throne of glass series so you might be quite shocked if you're new here and you are aware that i'm a huge sarah j mascali or you know how much i love throne of glass that i haven't actually finished the series um i spoke about this in videos before so if you've been around for a while you will know i put these on my yearly tbr on multiple tbrs a lot and i still don't read them um and the reason for that is i have this weird thing where when i love a series i just don't want it to be over and even though i do reread series and that is an option and i do that with actor because that's my all-time favorite i just feel like you can never beat the very first time you read a book like nothing will ever compare to the magic of the first time you read it and i love this series so much and i just don't want it to be over so i have never brought myself to read them i have done many rereads of all of the other books and then gotten to empire of storms and then been like oh, no <laughs> so that needs to change and this year will hopefully be the year so yes i might do a reread of all of the throne of glass books and then read these or i might just jump straight into empire of storms i'm not 100 sure and another reason i do put off reading empire of storms specifically is because of a specific scene with certain iron things on our main character that's all i'll say no spoilers but i know the spoiler and as soon as i read about that specific like thing that happens i was like oh my god no I do not want to read that right now um and that's been my mindset now for a few years so yeah i'm gonna go over the fear and hopefully read it this year i'm also kind of dreading reading tower of dawn because i know some people love it but a lot of people don't and it is like a kale book and i hate kale like I, I i just find them so boring and annoying so i'm not looking forward to reading that um but anyway yeah let's just quickly go through them so we do have Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. So this one I am excited to read because I know I will love it, but I also know it will break my heart. So yeah, I'm at least going to read this this year, but I'm hoping to finish the entire series. We then have Tower of Dawn, which I'm not looking forward to reading, to be honest, but it could surprise me. I doubt it, but it could. And then we have the final book, which is Kingdom of Ash, which I know will destroy me. And the this is another thing that does put me off finishing this series is I'm pretty sure that this has my least favourite trope in the world in. And I'm not going to say what it is because then it gives a massive spoiler if that is correct. I feel like I have read this somewhere. But it's literally like I can't, I cannot begin to explain how much I hate this trope. Like I loathe it and it will ruin everything for me. If this is what happens, like I will still love the book but it will just ruin it for me and that's another reason why I, i'm like not keen to read it like i know i will love it but also like i'm gonna despise that truth that's in here and i'm pretty sure it is so yes those are three books that i want to read because i want to finish the throne of glass series i want to finally say i've done it i have sorted my commitment issues out i faced my fears and i've read it so hopefully we'll do it this year if not then I, I don't even know what that says about me. <laughs> I really don't. But yeah, those are three books I definitely do want to try and read this year. Then we have another continuation of a series. Um, I think these are 
the only other ones to talk about really which is the zodiac academy series now i'm aware i don't have all of them because i think there's a ninth book and maybe even a tenth coming out but i only have up to book eight and that's all i want to get to because it's all i own at the moment so we have books five six seven and eight in the zodiac academy series i absolutely love this series i literally like cannot even begin to describe how much i loved these books like every single time i read one of them i am just filled with immense joy i just love them and they are long but when you get into them you can read them quite quickly but i just feel like it's been such a long time since i read book four i need a proper recap of all of those books first before i go back into book five so i do plan to pick up book five soon but like i said like look how chunky these books are like they're so heavy like look at that one oh my god so they are quite a commitment but i do really want to get up to book eight in this series at the very least read what i do already own because i do genuinely love these books and i'm so excited to revisit this world i've been debating it for months like i keep picking book five up and saying okay now i'm gonna go back into it and then i don't but i feel like once i'm in it like i will be in it like i will want to read all the other books the only thing that stops me is something happens in book four which broke my heart and also made me pissed off at one of the characters but then i've saw a spoiler for something that does happen now i don't know if it's book five or six but i really 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 don't want to read that this is where series go wrong for me is when i find spoilers and they put me off like because i just really don't want that to happen like i just don't um so this one specific spoiler is what stopped me when i first started book five i was like nope nope not going there and i put it down and i need to stop doing that but like sometimes it's hard to not see spoilers and my brain just works that way but yeah zero academy is such a fun series it's a fantasy series and it's not the best written thing but it's just very addictive so it's reverse harem we have two sisters who are the long lost kind of like heirs queens whatever of solaria which is where this world is we also have a school setting which is really cool it's very hogwarts-esque this entire series feels a little bit like harry potter but like a lot better and it is based around like astrology and stuff as well the magic is really really cool in here the characters are really good the romance is amazing there is bully romance in these books though so if you're not a fan of that would not recommend yeah there's a lot of banter and it's just so fun like it's just purely fun and i just love this world i love the characters i love the story i find it very addictive and i just love it so yeah i definitely do want to read these next four books in the series take them off the list and then i will read hopefully any other books that come out and book nine i think maybe next year or maybe this year we'll see but if i read all the ones i have on my shelf thus far i will be very very happy and then kind of an extension of that we have these four now i think there might also be more books in this series i don't know but i only own these four um these are set in the same world as zodiac academy so they are set in solari but i think they're at a different school so we have these four here so i really want to read these because i know i'll love them and when i finish that i will like be craving more and then i have these that i can read but i might read these before i continue that i don't know but yeah the first book is dark fay this is by caroline peckham suzanne valenti as are the zodiac books this one is I, i'm pretty sure it is still set in the same world so this one follows a vampire i think called elise and she goes to this school um in the hopes of finding out who her brother's killer is because her brother was murdered and we have four different guys who kind of run this school so we have a heartless dragon shifter cold-blooded basilisk an arrogant lion shifter and a brooding tattooed harpy so yeah it's reverse harm again she goes to school she's trying to figure out and she suspects that it is maybe one of these four and she's trying to figure out who it is whilst also kind of having a romance with the machine so i love a school setting and i just really enjoyed zodiac books that i've read so far that i feel like i will love this and i love a good murder mystery yeah i do want to try and read these four because i just really enjoy this world and like i said i already own these four so i would love to try and read those i definitely want to make a point of reading more books i have on my shelves and i feel like i could definitely get through these because even though some of them are long like i said the writing is just so addictive it's so easy to just kind of binge your way through them so those are all kind of the series i want to finish then let's move on to this stack here so next we have a manga and this is by junji ito this is Tomie, i think is how you pronounce it i have read a good few of junji ito's manga and i would love to say that one of my goals for this year is to finish reading all of the ones i own 
but I just don't know if that will happen. I have quite a few I need to read and some of them are a bit long. Um, but this one is just one that I really do want to read in 2024 because this has been on multiple TBRs of mine and I feel like this is Junji Ito's most famous work and probably the one I'm going to love the most. Um, I love the art for this. Like the art is absolutely beautiful. This is a horror manga. If you do like horror or anything kind of creepy or gothic vibes or kind of like thriller-esque I feel like you would like Junjito although they are very weird <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie very very weird stories but honestly so unpredictable and just so fun and I just generally enjoy them this one is basically about this girl called Tomie and she constantly gets murdered and then comes back so basically she is insanely beautiful and she can like seduce any man and when she does quite often they end up killing her and then she comes back again and yeah so no matter how many times they kill her they'll never get rid of her so it just sounds very very fun very very creepy excited to read it like i said this is a junji ito classic that i feel like i just need to read at this point and is i think the longest one but yeah i'm hoping that i will finally take this off my list this year and i'm predicting that i'm gonna love this one so we shall see very very excited to read it though so next we have a romance and this is from lukov with love by mariana zapata this is a enemies to lovers romance i believe and it's also an ice skating romance I don't know a lot about this to be honest I just think it is a romance between a figure skater and maybe her coach and he's like super grumpy and horrible could be wrong it says on the back their coldest of enemies off the ice but could their shared passion on the ice turn to unexpected heat discover from Lukov with love the enemies lovers tiktok sensation from the queen of slow burn romance so I, I do know that Mariana Spatter's books are very slow burn and I do love a slow burn romance Although this is quite a long romance so we shall see but yeah I'm actually not going to read the synopsis I would love to go into this and not knowing much like I said I know the overall gist of it is enemies to lovers and it's like ice skating vibes um and I've just heard it's really good everyone talks about this all the time and now that I have this stunning fairly edition I just really want to read it so I had to put a romance on my 2024 list and this is the one I've decided to go with I just love a slow burn and like I said it's so popular I just really want to read it and see what the hype is about um it is over 400 pages so it's quite a long one but hopefully it's not too dragged out and i enjoy the slow burn like it's done the way i like but yeah i am hopefully gonna get to this one this year then next we have a little romanticy so this one is another super popular one and i do want to try and read some of the more popular ones because i want to know what the hype is about that's why they're popular because they're good and this one is dawn of onyx by kate golden so this is the first book in a series which should i be starting more series no but i'm gonna do it anyway this is the first book in the sacred stone series and i don't even know much about this one if i'm being totally honest um all i know is is the main character gets captured by a king of darkness which i feel like i don't really need to know much more than that but yes very excited so it says here she has rare magical abilities and she offers up her life in place of her brothers and she's taken prisoner in the most dangerous kingdom on the continent and she has to heal the soldiers of the vicious onyx king is it onyx i think that's what you call it i don't know oh there's some ancient wicked words i love stuff like that and there's also a fellow prisoner she might have to work with to gain her freedom but he's as infuriating as he is cunning and seems to take twisted pleasure in playing on arwen's deepest fears but here in onyx kingdom trust is a luxury she can't afford to make it out of enemy territory she'll have to navigate backstabbing royals dark magic and deadly beasts but untold power lies inside arwen dormant and waiting for a spark if she can harness it she just might be able to escape with her life and hopefully her heart i love stuff like that this just sounds right up my street so excited to read this one and i've heard very good things about it so i'm looking forward to it and plus it recently got published um like traditionally published i believe in this like hardcover edition so i hope they bring them all out in hardcover i'm not sure how many books there are in this series it could just be this one or maybe there's a second book out already i feel like there is a second book out or one coming soon if i could be wrong i don't know but either way i'm looking forward to reading this i feel like i'm gonna love it and yeah it's a very pretty book so next we have what the river knows by isabella ibanez and this one i cannot wait for this has been pitched as perfect for fans of the mummy movies now they are some of my all-time favorite movies they have been since i was a child honestly love them so much i have the pot vinyls of them and everything like i'm obsessed with those movies and i've been looking for fantasy books that are inspired by ancient egypt like egyptian mythology and there are some but there aren't loads and yeah 
as soon as I heard about this one I was like that sounds like my kind of book and I am so excited to read this. I have this stunning fairy loot edition here, which I love. So basically to summarize, it's set in the 19th century and we follow Inez and it says that she has everything that she wants except her parents who are always off like traveling the world and stuff. And she ends up receiving this letter that says her parents have actually passed away in mysterious circumstances. So she sets sail to Cairo where they last were to find answers and figure out what happened. And the only thing she takes with her are her sketch pad and some ancient ring that her father has given her. Now I suspect that will play a part in the plot. And once she gets to Egypt, the ring starts to flare with some kind of like ancient magic and she's thrust into this game that threatens her life. And it says, and into the path of her new guardian's infuriatingly handsome assistant who seems determined to thwart her at every turn. I love stuff like that. It says here, the mummy meets death on the Nile in this lush historical fantasy set in 19th century Egypt, filled with adventure, a rival silver's romance and a dangerous race sounds perfect for me honestly i cannot wait to read this i've had so many good things about it and i have a feeling this is going to be another like divine rivals i spoke like i feel like this will blow up in 2024 i'm excited like i feel like i'm gonna love it rivals to lovers the mummy vibes just yes yes and a mystery a mystery as well just sounds perfect. I'm very excited to read this. I'm predicting this is going to be five stars. So if it isn't, I will cry. So next we have another fantasy, romanticy vibe. I think the romance is later in the series, but we have An Air Comes to Rise by CC Panarenda. I've had this on my shelf for quite some time and I do actually own the first three or four books. So I really do want to read this. Again, it should not be starting a new series, but... If I love it enough, I will hopefully binge my way through the series. So it says here, in a clash of steel, a mortal body may fall, but in a clash of dreams, a powerful air may rise. And it says it's for fans of Throne of Glass and Red Queen will enjoy the first installment in a grip of new fantasy series that, that portrays the unbreakable strength of friendship, the struggle for honour and the ache of sacrifice. So yeah, I believe there's seven books gonna be in total in this series. Now, I don't know a lot of what this is about, but I've been told it kind of has Throne of Glass vibes. But one of my friends has been reading this series and the way that she loves it has made me want to pick it up. And again, I do quite enjoy going into series when I don't know much about them. And I am trusting the hype on this one and I feel like I will enjoy it. I want to go into a new fantasy series, especially if I do finish a Throne of Glass series this year. I will need something else to become obsessed with. Um, and I think this is another one of those where it's like a long lost princess or something of that effect with some kind of like secret powers or dormant powers something like that i think that's the vibe of this could be wrong though so i think the guy in here is a night walker a silent assassin or something and somehow they end up entangled with one another something of that effect it sounds really good anyway from what i remember and like i said i'm just going off people's like reviews for this because i've had a lot of people talk about it and i just really want to start it like it's been on my shelf for so long i just feel like i need to start it at this point so yeah i'm putting this on my tbr but honestly don't know too much about it so next we have a duology which is a, this one here i think this is the celestial kingdom duology is what the title of it is so we have daughter of the moon goddess and we also have heart of the sun warrior these are by su lin tan so these have been compared to a chinese drama that i absolutely love which is um the fairy and the devil i haven't actually finished it yet but i'm a good chunk in it's a very long series um but i love that series and this has been compared to that a few times so i really do want to read it purely just for that reason but i've heard a lot of good things about this and i just feel like it's about time that i did pick it up and i am excited to dive in it says here race on the moon xing yin was unaware she was being hidden from the celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing the elixir of immortality but when her magic flares and her existence is discovered she is full to flee her home leaving her mother behind alone powerless and afraid she makes her way to the celestial kingdom a land of wonder and secrets in disguise she trains alongside the emperor's son mastering archery and magic despite the passion which flames between them I'm excited about that. <laughs> to rescue her mother, she embarks on a quest confronting legendary creatures and vicious enemies. But when forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, she must challenge the ruthless emperor, leaving her torn between losing all she loves or plunging the realm into chaos. Inspired by the legend of Chang of the Moon Goddess, this captivating debut weaves Chinese mythology into a sweeping adventure of love and family and mortals and magic. So yes, I am so excited. This sounds like my kind of book. It sounds like a Chinese fantasy drama, which I love. And I love the fairy and the devil. And like I said, this has been compared to that before. Not necessarily the plot, but apparently the vibes are quite similar. And I just love anything like that. And this just sounds like it's going to be so magical and just filled with romance and 
magic I don't know I'm just so excited so yeah I really want to read the first book and then read the second and complete the duology like I said had a lot of good things so very very excited to pick this one up and hopefully I do love it next we have another sequel which I'm very excited about which is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I expect this is on a lot of people's TBR for this year. This did not get published officially in the UK until the beginning of January, which is why it's on my 2024 TBR. I read Divine Rivals last year. I really enjoyed it. I filmed a spoiler filled reading vlog for my Patreon. So if you did want to go and watch that, you can head to my Patreon and check it out. Um, but I really enjoyed that book. I did give it four stars. I think the hype was something that did affect my rating because I expected more from it than what I got. I'm not saying I didn't love it. I did love it a lot but I just did not love it as much as I expected and I did read it I think after fourth wing and I loved fourth wing so I feel like that did affect my experience but I still loved it and I'm so excited to read this one the way the first book ends oh my god so I'm very scared for this book but I'm so excited I just love the writing more than anything Rebecca Ross's writing is so beautiful lyrical and just amazing I really really enjoyed the writing the thing that stopped me from giving it five stars was I did not feel like we learned enough about the warring gods in the first book which is a big part of the plot so I'm hoping in the second one we do find out more about them and I'm pretty sure this is centered more around the warring gods it does have a very kind of what I think it's world war one or world war two it's based off I can't remember which one one of them and I don't like books that are to do with World War One or two. Like it's not my thing with historical fantasy. And it does have those vibes in the first one, which is something that did take away for me. Like I just, I'm not a fan of that. But I did still really love it. I love the characters, the romance. I loved the warring gods aspect. It felt very realistic, which is so silly to say about a fantasy novel. But sometimes you read those fantasy books that the way the fantastical elements and the magic is written is something that feels plausible like if magic were to exist in the real world or warring gods it would be like it is in divine rivals so i really loved how like it felt possible if that makes sense but yeah i am so excited to read this one i'm so excited to see what happens with our main characters what happens with the warring gods and how it all ties together so it is a duology so everything will conclude in this book so i am excited to read it i don't read enough duologies so i'm looking forward to finishing this one and yeah i'm predicting i'm gonna love this i wonder if i will love it more than the first book but we shall see but yeah anyway excited to read it hopefully love it and that is that so next we have bring me your midnight by rachel griffin this one is purely my tbr because i did not read it last year i'm a huge fan of rachel griffin she's one of my favorite authors i just think her books are just so fun witchy and atmospheric and just everything i crave during like the autumn months and yeah i didn't get to this one last year i believe this has forbidden romance it's a witchy story um i can't remember the full synopsis and i'm trying my best not to read into it again because i do want to go into this with like very little thoughts and just enjoy it but i'm pretty sure she has to like do something with her magic and like release it into the sea or something like that and she doesn't and she meets this boy who like knows forbidden magic or dark magic or something he's like teaching her or something like that i don't know it's something along those lines and they fall in love i assume it says here it's a lush romantic fantasy about forbidden love the choices we make and the pull between duty and desire so very very excited to read this one i've loved her previous books so i'm sure i'm gonna love this one as well then we have another sequel which is the ashes and the star cursed king by chris of broadbent this is the sequel to serpent and the wings of night which was in my top books of 2023 so this is in the crowns of niaxia series i'm very excited to read this the first book was so fun the enemies love was romance the hunger games trial vibes the vampires and the way it ends was just so intense so i'm really excited to see what happens with the characters the romance because i don't feel like it was a case of having the first book and other romances set up and like that's it it's very much like there's very much more to come which i like because i hate it when i get to a book and the romance is like done and then i'm like what am i reading for now if i'm not still reading for the characters to get together so i feel like i'm still gonna love this because the romance still has so much more to go and also i feel like things are just gonna get very brutal and intense there's gonna be war and stuff i'm just really excited for this book but it's just such a good series if you like vampires you like fantasy romance enemies to lovers vibes you want something that has like a trial in definitely pick up the first book but i'm so excited to read this and i know i'm gonna love this book so next is another one that i actually don't know anything about the reason i want to read this is because one of my friends is obsessed with this and i've seen a few fantasy slash fantasy romance booktubers 
talk about this book and say how amazing it is and then another person i know recently read this and loved it as well and i believe i think the sequel just came out so i decided i wanted to read it and i thought i'd put it on this list and that is lady of darkness by melissa k roharich i think is how you pronounce the name i literally don't really know much about this i can't remember what it's about but it just says here owned by a ruthless assassin lord scarlet and her two sisters have been trained since they were children to torture and take life they are the most feared tree on the continent, but they are also wild and unpredictable. A tragic night has Scarlet finding herself locked away in a noble's household, trapped and forgotten until she is ready to fall in line. Until the day she's presented with a job, if she completes the assignment, her payment will be something she has coveted for 10 years. Revenge against the Fae Fire Prince who brutally killed her mother. Is she willing to sacrifice her ideals for retribution? But when children begin disappearing from her home, all her plans are put on hold as she races to save the most innocent. With the help of old friends, a jilted lover and a mysterious newcomer who claims the magic of the Fae is possible in the mortal lands, Scarlet delves into the darkest corners of the world. Forgotten secrets will come to light and she will discover the darkness extends far beyond her own kingdom. So yeah, I love the sound of this. The Fae vibe, the dark, brutal vibes, a badass main character. It just sounds amazing. So excited for this. And like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about this. So I feel like this is going to be one of those books that I am going to love. And I'm also trying trying to make a point of reading a lot more fantasy romance that's like indie published because I do own a lot that I still haven't read so yeah I'm very very excited to read that one and then the last two books are part of a series and that is The Ballad of Never After and A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber I cannot wait to read these I actually have read Once Upon a Broken Heart I think two or three times I reread it at the start of 2023 with the intentions of going on to this one and I very briefly started this book I got 24 pages in but then I wasn't really in the mood for it anymore don't know why but apparently I wasn't but I definitely do want to pick this series up and complete it in 2024 I loved Once Upon a Broken Heart I read the arc in one sitting I remember randomly picking it up one night and I stayed up till 4am reading it because I was mesmerized the writing is incredible in Once Upon a Broken Heart it's just so whimsical and the romance the wild just everything about it it's just a fairy tale like that's the best way to describe it it's just really good storytelling i feel like i was getting told a bedtime story but in the best way and i just loved it and then like i said i enjoyed my reread last year as well five stars so i've been meaning to read these two for a while now especially this one obviously for the last year so now that the third and final book is out i figured i would wait and read them together and that is my plan i think i'll probably do a reread of once upon a broken heart but listen to it via audio and then go on to these i want to tab and annotate them as well but i'm very, very excited to go back this world and be reunited with Jax again because I love Jax yeah anyway very excited to read these so that does conclude my 24 books I want to read in 2024 I am so excited for all of these books I really do hope I get to them I probably won't read all of them because like I said I have commitment issues and I also like it just don't stick to TBRs very much I'm a mood reader I'm also still in the process of getting out the worst reading slump I've ever experienced in my entire existence so let's hope I get out of it let's hope I do manage to read a good chunk of these books and they are all five stars that I'm predicting them to be I'm just so excited for another year of reading and I just cannot wait for all of the books that I am yet to read I figured as well I quickly talk about some reading goals and like channel goals that I have and that sort of thing because why not so as I've said I want to make it a priority to try and complete some series or just read the books I currently have within a series on my shelf. That is one of my main goals. I also want to try and listen to more audiobooks because sometimes there are certain books that you don't want to read physically and you just want to do the audiobook for and I feel like that will help me get through a lot more books on my shelf because I have so many unread books. I have way more unread books than read. I mean by a lot so I need to start getting the numbers down a bit so yeah i definitely listen to more audiobooks i want to make more use of my kindle because i read so much quicker on my kindle and i just don't know why i don't use it like i maybe read one or two books a year on it which is just ridiculous like i should be reading a lot more on it especially because i have kindle limited and i'm just paying for it and not using it 
so that is another thing i really want to do is read more ebooks i also want to read more arcs and more manuscripts i want to make that like a priority in any arcs i get sent i need to start reading more because quite often i just don't have the time before publication so i need to do that more as well and another thing i want to read a lot more of this year is fantasy romance specifically indie published fantasy romance because i do own a lot that i have not yet read so that is like kind of my main reading goals i also want to diversify my reading a lot more because i know that's something i definitely need to do and i also want to read more translated novels because i do really enjoy those as well as read a lot more manga i have a lot of manga on my shelves and i just love manga but i go through phases with it and there's so many series i want to complete and finish reading or start reading and finish as well so that is another goal that i do have but those are my reading goals channel goals i don't really have any in particular I just want to start getting more into a routine and being more consistent. I would really love to kind of stick to doing monthly TBRs, maybe introduce wrap ups when I am reading properly again. And I also just want to do more vlogs because I just don't feel like I do enough. I also want to have a go at doing themed vlogs because again, I just never do those. And I feel like it would be really fun to do a themed vlog rather than like just like the weekly reading vlogs that I do. So let me know if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see when it comes to themed vlogs or if there's any specific videos you would like to see me do in 2024 please do let me know because i am always looking for new videos to film and at the end of the day the people who watch these videos are you guys and i want to create content that you want to watch so do let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see and before anyone says a bookshelf tour i know i was supposed to do it last year and the year before but it's such a big challenge like you guys do not understand how many books i own like we're talking i don't even want to count i've got a scanner and i am planning to scan it in but I know it's like at least 1,500, probably maybe even 2,000. Like I'm not exaggerating because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15 bookshelves in my library room alone. I have a bookshelf in my office with books on and then I have books downstairs as well. So I have a lot of books like a lot and yeah like not only that i have extension packs on all my shelves so they're very very tall my tripod is not tall enough to reach them so that's something i've still been trying to figure out how i'd film it and i'm just never happy with how my shelves look so i am planning to do a big reorganization so there is a bookshelf reorganization video going to be coming very soon when i do have the time to do that but once i've done that i will be filming a bookshelf tour in 2024 it is going to happen i cannot wait but it will be long and i mean like we're talking maybe two hours long so yeah that will be coming but those are all of my goals and my tbr for the year please do let me know your reading goals for the year in the comments as well as which books you're planning to read this year i would love to know and if you are interested in any extra content from me you can find that on my patreon which will be linked down below that's where you can find a monthly buddy read a monthly readathon a discord live shows hauls extra content in general it's all on my patreon and all of my other socials will be listed down below as well but thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you're safe and well i hope you're reading a lot of good books and i'll see you in the next one bye